What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about what I think are the absolute best ghost loadouts to get on the first loadout that you get in Warzone. Um, I think the state of the game currently um, is in such a place that you could very easily uh, just get ghost on your first loadout and do very well, if not even better than you would if you got overkill, because um, a lot of squads are running very aggressively right now, and having ghost is going to be uh, really, really a huge advantage early game. And there's some fantastic options for secondaries that I'm going to go over today that really almost make it not necessary to have um, to have overkill to start with. I mean, it's nice to have overkill for certain reasons, but um, overall, I don't even think you really need it right now. So we'll talk about the best ARs, best secondaries, and all of that in this video. But first, if you guys like the content, consider dropping that sub, like, and comment. Always helps us grow, um, helps keep the website live and up to date. Um, but first, we've got to jump in here, and we have uh, our very first ad with Skillshare, which I'm very excited to be partnered with them. So we'll jump into that, go through that real fast, and then we will get back into the main topic of the video, which is the best ghost loadouts. I am very excited to announce a partnership with Skillshare with True Game Data. So Skillshare is an online learning community. Uh, they have thousands of different topics to learn from. Uh, I think it fits in really well with True Game Data because most of you come to my channel to learn about COD in depth. And that's exactly what Skillshare will provide you. But they provide it for almost any topic you can think of. Animation, creative writing, film and video, web development, UI, UX design, management. Just pretty much anything you can think of they have on there. Um, I personally love learning new things. And uh, Skillshare honestly is the perfect place to do that in today's day and age. Um, so a few examples here. If you want to learn how to make uh, YouTube videos, um, there's a there's a quick one hour and 14 minute video hosted by none other than MK, MKBHD himself. Um, this would be an awesome little course to learn how to script, shoot, and edit. And he would be a great teacher. Um, they have, like I mentioned earlier, they have UI, UX, design, and web development. So if you want to learn how to build websites like True Game Data, these are the perfect kind of classes on here. They have just literally tons of classes that you can take on here uh, all about web development, UI, UX, um, just anything anything you could want to learn. PHP, SQL, HTML, CSS, everything's on here uh, to help you learn how to program. And I mean, it's not just that. If you want to learn something else, there's all kinds of different options on here. I'm just really excited to be working with them because um, I honestly think their website's awesome and I love learning things. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month. And I honestly think that uh, it's more than worth it, I think, expanding your knowledge and just in general learning is one of the best things you can do. Um, we actually have a special deal with Skillshare as well, where the first 1,000 people to use my special link in my video description uh, will get a free trial of the premium Skillshare membership, which is pretty awesome. Um, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check them out. It's a really cool website, genuinely, and um, I think you'll like what you find. All right, so first I'm going to talk about the main weapon that I would run with this. Um, and when I'm talking about getting Ghost, um, this is kind of the basic loadout I'm talking about. So Quick Fix, I like Quick Fix a lot. It's become I've become a much bigger fan of it recently over EOD. EOD is still a great choice, but I'm I'm really enjoying Quick Fix. Um, you get Ghost, Amped. Amped is almost still necessary. There's almost no good third perk besides Amped right now. Uh, that's really worth using in my opinion. Um, but when you do this, you can get Ghost off the rip on the first loadout, and basically for our secondary, we're going to either be using a launcher or pretty much akimbo pistols. Those are really the two uh, most viable things. So um, I'll talk about each build and each loadout and why I'm choosing what attachments I'm choosing and give you some good options here. So let's start with uh, main weapon. So I am absolutely in love with the Cold War AK right now. Uh, I feel like I just destroy people with it. It kills people so fast. It feels like the recoil is really manageable, especially with these lower zoom optics. Um, so I probably would generally use mill stop instead of uh, micro. But So this is my all-round Cold War AK build that I would run with Estrella. So um, there's some personal preference in here, but with the AK, since you're running it as an all-rounder, you're not going to be using it at super long range. Um, it's supposed to be used everywhere, so it needs to be good up close, decent mid-range, decent long range. Um, so we would run Gru Suppressor. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I don't use a barrel, and it's all, I don't really ever know how to answer that question. It's just simply that I think the other attachments are more important. So um, Spetsnaz Grip for making it much easier to control the Cold War AK at longer ranges. 
Uh, 45 round mag keeps the ADS times down on this thing. Um, you could run the Bakelite 60 round, but 45 I think is good enough, especially because the Cold War AK has a ridiculously fast reload time. Um, you can reload it in literally like one second. So slow fire rate combined with 45 round mag and really fast reload time, I really don't think you need to go bigger than 45. And because of that, that keeps the ADS times down, like I said, which makes it a lot more effective up close. Um, KGB skeletal stock, this is the Raider pad, basically Raider stock. Um, just makes you much more mobile when you're firing. Um, and even after the nerfs, I still think this is a fantastic attachment. And you still really need something that helps with your sprint to fire times when you're running only one gun. Because you need to be able to at least somewhat compete with SMGs up close. Uh, and sprint to fire time is hugely important in those situations. So both the mobility this gains you and the sprint to fire times, I think, are hugely important. And then an optic. Um, optics more personal preference. Because I want this still to be effective up close and decently effective at range, um, I use the mill stop. I think another really good choice would be like the Hawksmore or uh, one of the 1.5x optics would be kind of more of a middle ground as well. You could go as high as maybe the 2x or maybe even the Axle 3x now that it's been nerfed, not nerfed, it's been changed to basically being a VLK. Um, the reason I don't use that is because I feel like that really makes it less effective up close. Um, and I don't really want that because I want this to be used everywhere, up close and at range. Um, so this is what I would run with like a Strela. So the Strela, let's just jump into that real fast. Um, launchers, there's a few different options. RPG is still really good. Um, there's no huge difference between the Black Ops RPG and the Modern Warfare RPG. Um, I I don't really ever run that, to be honest. I, I like the Strela a lot more. The Strela is a one-hit kill, even if they have EOD, if you hit them in the body. And the bullet velocity on the Strela, I don't have the actual number, uh, but it's very, very fast. And you can basically snipe with it. It's so much fun to use. Um, it's super easy to take out vehicles. Um, it'll kill an, uh, an ATV in one shot. It'll kill a chopper in one shot. It'll kill a rover in one shot. Um, it will not kill a Bertha or the Jeep in one shot. Um, but it basically gets the Jeep to like one bullet. So it gets disabled immediately. Um, it's so, so fun to take out vehicles with this thing. And it's great for you know just even even just you know anti-personnel stuff it, it it can take people out super super quick and easy even at long range i mean i've had 200 meter kills with this thing before i basically use it like a sniper rifle that also can blow up vehicles um, it's just a ton of fun this is honestly one of my absolute favorite um favorite builds right now uh to run in the game like i don't even feel like i need a secondary with this so this is the first one i'm going to highlight um, you don't have to use the AK. Uh, I think the Farah is in a fantastic spot right now to be used as an all-rounder. Um, that's probably my... The Farah and the XM4 are probably my two second choices. Um, just because they have much better mobility than the Modern Warfare guns still. Uh, the AMAX is great as an all-round gun, but it just uh, does not have the the same mobility that the, the Cold War guns have. And since we're trying to use these as all-rounders, I think it might be a little bit better of an option to uh, just want run one of the Cold War guns like the XM4 or the Farah. All right, quickly on to some more secondaries. So uh, most of you probably know about this, but Akimbo M19s and Akimbo Renettis both are insanely good. Um, most people pick the M19s, uh, but really they're both great options. So we've started to add pistols to the site as well as the rest of the sniper rifles. We don't have all the data for them yet, but the damage profiles are on there, so... Um, if we add the M19 and we add the Renettis, you will see that they're basically the same gun. Um, if we generate summary, base stat comparison. So I'll scroll down so you can see the damage values. So they have the exact same damage profile. The Renettis have slightly more range, almost a one meter more range, which is pretty insignificant. They have the same fire rate, same damage profile. So they have exactly the same TTKs. Um, so running them akimbo, they're both great options. So if you have Renettis leveled up and you don't have M19s leveled up, feel free to use uh, Renettis. Um, the one sort of important difference is the uh, magazine size. So the M19s can get up to 32 rounds, whereas the Renettis can only get up to 27. Um, but let's jump back over to the game, and I'll show you the actual builds for this. All right, so since these are basically the same gun, the M19 and the Renettis, um, the build's the same, so we're going to run monolithic suppressor, 5 milliwatt laser, the biggest magazine, which, like I said, on the Renettis is 27, on the M19s is 32. Um, we're going to run a Kimbo, lightweight trigger, 
and that is the build right there so this gives you uh just pretty insane ttks to be honest up close especially if you have stopping power these this will kill any smg in the game if you have stopping power and honestly if you're inside 10 meters this will still beat most smgs without stopping power so they are super super good honestly they're too good for a ghost loadout um tons of fun to use the reason I don't run these is just because I like to have a second gun. I mean, I, I obviously, I like building guns and I like, you know, trying to get good builds for SMGs and stuff. So, um, I like to have two main weapons rather than just running the same thing every time. But there's really not that much reason to run uh, an SMG over um, these Akimbo pistols with Ghost. I think for your KD overall, it would probably be better even to run just Ghost on the first loadout with these just because... Uh, you'll survive longer, and they still kill ridiculously fast. Um, but I'll show you this on the M19s as well real fast, even though it's the same. I believe this is exactly the same build. So we've got biggest magazine, lightweight trigger, akimbo, 5 milliwatt, and monolithic suppressor again. So the reason we use monolithic is bullet velocity damage range. Um, you can't use the extended barrels because uh, those hurt hip fire, and you can only hip fire when you're akimbo. Um, so there's really only one viable build for this. You can't really switch any of this up. Um, you get really good movement speed, ridiculous DTKs. They're honestly, honestly a little bit too good. Quickly, a couple honorable mentions in the SMG category. Um, the Psychops have gotten some pretty big nerfs. They were really ridiculously good to begin with, but it's still a good choice. And if you're really going to be up close to people, like inside, I don't know, seven and a half meters or so, then Akimbo Psychops is probably still the best option. Um, so you'd probably... The issue is the 80 round drum makes you super slow now, and so does Akimbo. Um, so really, I'm not sure exactly how viable this would be anymore. Um, but this would be the build that you would use. Probably, you'd just be really slow and clunky. Um, really, it might be a little bit better to run them without Akimbo now. And if I was going to do that, I'd probably put on... Um, I would probably leave the auto barrel and put on an optic just because I don't love the iron sights on uh, the pistols. Um, so this is probably what I would run. This will be faster movement than the Akimbo was, and it'll still be decent. I think overall M19s and Renetti's Akimbo, like I showed earlier, is still a better option. Um, but this isn't terrible. And then another pretty good option, which I actually think is a little better than the Psychovs now, would be the Diamatis. So just get a single Diamati. Um, you could run Task Force for mobility if you wanted, but um, I don't really want to add recoil to it, I don't think. So I would probably go with either the Tac Ops or the Chrome Line Barrel just for either max bullet velocity or more damage range. Um, probably I would do damage range. Agency Suppressor is going to give you some bullet velocity already. Magazine, probably Stanag 30 round, gives you a really big magazine. Um, and I do like an optic on this, so Microflex Optic. And then for the last option, um, Akimbo is, again, not very good anymore after all the nerfs the Diamati got, but a single Diamati is pretty deadly. So if you wanted a good hip fire, you could use the, the 5 milliwatt laser. Um, that's not a bad choice. Um, really, I think that's probably the best option. I mean, I don't know why you would really want to run a grip or, or anything. So this is probably what I would run on my uh, uh, Diamati, and this is very good. Um, and it gives you a little more range probably than the Akimbo M19s and Renetti's or yeah, Akimbo M19s and Renetti's just because you can actually ADS with this thing and um, you know, the Renetti's and the M19s because they're Akimbo you can only hip fire so it's pretty hard to actually hit anyone outside uh, outside that you know, 10-15 meter range and this could actually still be effective outside that especially if you mix in some headshots uh, the Diamati is actually pretty deadly still I want to quickly talk about the Farah. So I think the Farah is one of the best choices right now to run as your main all-around gun. Um, so this one I have built here, uh, this is another option. This is more of a longer range version. Um, so compared to the Cold War uh, AK that I showed, I swapped out the last stock for the Liberator Barrel for more bold velocity. So this will be more effective at range, but worse up close. Um... Really, you just need to try these different builds out for yourself and see which ones you like the most. I personally really, that AK build's still my favorite, so I would probably run the same thing here with the uh, last stock and then Spetsnaz grip. So this makes it pretty good at range, pretty good up close, decent bullet velocity with the Gru Suppressor. 
Um, overall, this is my favorite build, but there's a bunch of different options. You could run, um, you could take the Spetsnaz grip off and run uh, a damage range barrel, or if you wanted the bolt velocity barrel so you can hit your shots at range easier. It, there's just a ton of different ways to build these, but like I said, my favorite for an all-round gun right now is is this, to run with uh, either Estrella or uh, the Akimbo pistols. All right, everybody. Well, I think that covers what I think are the most viable ghost loadouts. And like I've said throughout the video, I honestly think these are uh, very close to as good as getting overkill in terms of uh, kill potential. And you get the added perk of literally having ghost off the first loadout. So you can kind of be much more aggressive and, and uh, go after teams that don't have ghost and they won't ever see you coming. So I think these are great loadouts. Honestly, I have a ton of fun using them. Um, I'm gonna. I use. I've been using them a lot more recently, just because I haven't been loving any of the secondaries. So I think um, all of these options that I showed in the video are awesome, and you should try them out. They're just ridiculously good. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. So thanks again, to Skillshare, for for sponsoring this video. Very excited to be working with them. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next video, and I hope you uh, hope you have a good day.